once again to our coaching network's weekly podcast. I am John Bryce of Football Scoop and very excited to be joined today by Alcorn University head coach Fred McNair, a legendary player for the Braves, um, turning in quite an impressive head coaching career for the Braves and um, getting some things going on this season. Coach Mack, welcome to the show, buddy. Well, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Yes, sir. And, and before we dive into questions, I want to share a little anecdote here that I don't think will embarrass you, but it speaks to the character that you are. When my father passed away in uh, July of 20, 2022, about two weeks after the funeral, I go to the mailbox and there's a UPS delivery there. And it's a football signed by the entire Alcorn Braves staff and with a handwritten note wishing me well um, in the morning of my father and coach that's on display in my man cave downstairs. It'll be on display forever. Um, and I just think that speaks to the character of you and your staff. So I appreciate that and wanted to publicly thank you for that. I appreciate you, man. And as I said, we're always, always confident here, comfort word when you, when you, when you, when you're on the down and you lose a, a great family member, such as your father, father, man, it was, it was great for us to, to sign that football and get it to you, man. So uh, we was thinking about you at that time of need and uh, just want to do something for you. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Speaking of some losses, and we'll transition into the to the football field and, and uh, your career and some things that you also do off the field. But uh, you you did suffer a tragic loss a few years ago with the loss of your brother, uh, the legendary Steve McNair. Um, how have you been able to cope with that through the years, and how do you help carry on that that family name at Alcorn? You know, the biggest thing is I think that that, that when when you lose a when you lose a brother um, such as his character, man, and and you kind of feel your way around, and and once he's gone, and you really miss him, you kind of hold a part of that with you at all times, uh, John. And uh, so every every day through my daily bread, uh, you know, I think about him, uh, especially on game day on Saturdays. You know, just think about the things that that, that he's done uh, throughout his career in terms of football, and you know, even even away, even away from football. Even when Katrina, the catastrophe hit with Katrina, how he loaded trucks up and took them down uh, to the coast and and deliver, deliver items to those people down there, man. It was just a great character, man. And um, I think about that a lot, the things that he's done um, for the people, um, not only in the football world, but outside the football world too, John. So um, just carrying that name and the things he had done, you know, respectfully, you know, just tried to, tried to build off that, you know, every day. Um, and just instilling these young men that we have, um, you know, you can still make it um, throughout life, you know, when, you, when you're down and out, you know, and such as yourself, John, you know, um, you know, when you lose a family member, how you have to really be tough and get back on the road, man, and, and keep fighting. You said something there that really resonated with me for your situation. You talked about carrying on that family name and the, and the McNair family name is synonymous with, with Alcorn sports in general, Alcorn uh, State University, and, and obviously specifically the football program, you've had opportunities. You've had a ton of success. People have tried to pry you away from Alcorn State. Why is it so important for you to stay and represent and, and really be a symbol of what Alcorn State is? You know, the biggest thing is, I think, when you when you, when you you have two degrees come from that university, they, they, they gave you the opportunity to, to play football and, and get a quality education, and, and I received my master's as well. Um, you know, just seem like you, you owe uh, the university something. So, you know, in terms of that, you know, I, I want to be at Alcorn State, um, you know, for a long term, you know. But uh, if it don't happen, John, and somebody just decides to say, look, it's time to go, um, you know, I won't have no problem with it because Alcorn has done a lot for me uh, in terms of what they have done for me education-wise and, and giving me an opportunity to come back and, and coach um, at a D1 level um, at the university, my alma mater. You know, so um, it's been big, John, and, you know, having a coaching staff that I have with the old guys and that's been loyal to me. And, you know, uh, the biggest thing is if, if I find somewhere to go, you know, those guys will probably come with me, John, because they they're a good staff. That's awesome. Um, and you've done a lot for Alcorn. Let, let's not ignore that. You did a lot for them as a player. You've done a lot for them in, in the last several years as head coach after taking over in 2016, I think four divisional titles. You've won the SWAC overall conference championship a couple of times. You're getting things right right now, win, winners of three out of four. And I think you control your destiny once again uh, to win your division. 
what what's been the key to that sustained success and then how have you guys hung in there this year after a little bit of a tough start to to get things rolling you know the biggest thing is john just just the hunger that i have you know when i first got the job in 16 uh didn't many people think i was going to be successful as a head coach and uh and i took that personally um some of the some of the things that were said about my coaching career and and uh, how I got the job and and all those things that it made me want to just really just grab it and and just really go because I, I wanted to prove those people wrong that really doubted me uh, in my coaching career. You know, and some still do, John. So, you know, it's, it's an ongoing thing, but I keep fighting each and every day. You know, as long as I can come to the to the office and, and see the coaching staff and those young men working out each and every day, it gives me life and uh, give me the courage to, to keep going, uh, keep moving. Uh, and I just kind of build off that and, uh, and the things that, that people doubt it. Um, you know, even even you take that from a brother uh, when he went into the, to the league that, that he wasn't going to make it long because he, was a, he wasn't a pocket passer back then. And, and now that's all you have. You have those mobility quarterbacks now, John. Uh, so just to be in the coaching career that I have and the things that I've done for the university, uh, winning championships, graduating the kids from the university, uh, with a lot of success and some moving on and, and going to the job world, you know, uh, getting good jobs when they leave us. So I think that, you know, what I've done, I've proven that I can get the job done uh, on the field as well as off the field. Well, uh, speaking of on the field, you you were uh, setting records before your brother came along and set records at Alcorn. You played professionally, played in the CFL for a long time, and you obviously had a dual skill set. How much do you watch the game today? And wish, man, I'd, I'd like to be playing right now because it it's more conducive to to dual threat quarterbacks right now. And you're right, and you're, you're absolutely right because you know the things that I I look at now, I said, man, they didn't have that when I was in, and you know I, I wish they'd had the whole spread system and and just slinging around the yard a little bit and uh and things like that, but they didn't have it then. So and now I look at it now, it fits, man, it, it fits. It's so so um. So evenly matched in, in terms of what these quarterbacks are doing and with the receivers and stuff like that. So uh, the, the NFL is, is really spreading it out now. So a lot of things that the, the college player, the college teams are doing, the NFL is doing some of it now. So, um, you know, it's big. And uh, we'd love to have that chance to do it all over again, John, in this setting. Yeah. For sure. I think a lot of us would like to like to see you um, and, and your late brother in today's game and just see see what you guys could do right now. But speaking of slinging it around, you got a quarterback right now who's playing at an extremely elite level. And we hear a lot about the transfer portal at the uh, FBS level. But you guys have former University of Missouri quarterback, former consensus four star elite 11 guy, uh, Aaron Allen playing at a really high level for you. Uh, first of all, can you take us through the the process of getting him from Missouri to Alcorn and maybe what that says about taking a quarterback out of the SEC and having him come play at an HBCU program like Alcorn. And then what's he doing so well for you guys right now? I think the biggest thing is when Mako, when Mako came down, you know, his, Coach Phillips did a real good job of recruiting him. Uh, for one, he did an outstanding job of, of staying with that kid and getting him to come down and, and build access to our program. So he's going to really help us out a lot. Uh, he's been banged up a little bit this year, but um, the biggest thing is we got him here and we, we love him. He loves it here at Alcorn. So um, just to get him to transition back to rare form and hopefully in another couple of weeks, he'll be ready to go again. Um, and Aaron Allen uh, from La Tech, man, he's done yeah, a Lottech. phenomenal job. And uh, he's done he's done a great job of doing the things that we asked him to do. I think Coach Phillip has done a real good job in that quarterback room, uh, get those, getting those guys prepared to play, and and um, with the things that he's doing with his teaching and um, and film watching studies. So, uh, you know, Allen has been lighting it up for the last few ball games, and and um, hopefully he'll continue to do that. So, um, just as soon as Mako get back on his feet and be ready to roll, we'll have that that one two punch. Uh, which will, which will now I'm not afraid to play two quarterback system. So uh, we'll have that together. So just looking for that, that edge that, that Mako can give us when he come yeah. back. Yeah. You guys have got better depth at the quarterback position and, and arguably more talent at the quarterback position than a lot of uh, FBS programs. And it's showing in recent weeks and the way you're playing. Another neat thing uh, about your roster, I think is you've had opportunity to coach family members, you've had opportunity to coach your son. You've had opportunity to coach a nephew uh, what's that like for you? 
I tell you, it's, it's, it's good to see uh, when you talk about your, your coaching your family member, you know, I get a chance to watch those guys move around. And uh, even when Tim was there, uh, seeing him play at a high level, uh, you know, my son, this is last year, um, just the opportunity to, to see those guys grow uh, on the football field. And, and um, even in the classroom, he'll graduate uh, this year with his master's uh, and uh, plus this year of playing and been doing a phenomenal job uh, at the receiver point. So uh, just getting an opportunity to coach those guys and even my son, man, I tell you, it's, it's, it's a dream come true, uh, which you want to, you want to be able to coach him. I coached them all through little league baseball and, and peewee football and stuff like that. So just seeing him grow from that up until now, being a young man that he that he is, uh, doing a phenomenal job. It's very special to me. That's awesome. That, that's really cool that you share that uh, insight with you. When did you maybe realize that, that your son w- was good enough to, to come play for you at Alcorn? I watched him in high school, and uh, he had several opportunities, and I uh, think that uh, he didn't receive the, the, the benefit of the doubt to, to, to play more. Uh, because he played every position in high school um, and everything. So uh, just seeing him play and grow and the athlete, he's a very, he's very athletic. And uh, just giving an opportunity to say, okay, I get my son at all corn too. And he can be access to the program. And the other thing I, I took that opportunity and took advantage of it, uh, to sign him and, uh, and bring him in as a freshman. He played as a freshman. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't afraid to play him and, and, and all those things that happened. So, did a great job then and doing a great job now uh, catching balls for Avery. Taking, taking advantage of opportunities is uh, is exactly what you've done at Alcorn as we continue to uh, jump around here and, and visit here on the, our Coaching Network's podcast with Alcorn State Head Coach Fred McNair. I'm John Bryce of Football Scoop. I believe now you're the longest tenured coach in the SWAC, or you're certainly right up there at the very top of most tenured coaches in the SWAC. So I've got to ask you, especially this time last year, there was a lot of talk about who is SWAC and who is not SWAC. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Coach Prime, love him or hate him, uh, and he's awesome, but he's not SWAC anymore. So are you SWAC? I've been SWAC for a long time, uh, John. I've been SWAC for a long time. When I first entered Alcorn in uh, in 1986, man, and it was a blessing for me to – to get that call and said they were going to sign me as a quarterback and got a chance to play receiver for two years uh, before moving back to quarterback. So I can say I am swag, John. Um, and it, it's good to say that because um, when you go places and um, and you see different different forms of, of, of conference and, you, and you're seeing different people from different conference, uh, it means a lot to where I come from yeah. because I, I, we work hard there and, Ain't too much of giving to you in the swag, so you really have to work extra uh, to be 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 a, be a part of something special. Man, I, I think you're cheating here a little bit because you're just guiding me right into my next question. You just said not too much given to you. Um, I think when I was texting with you the other day, you were out painting the football practice fields. You were painting the stripes on the field so that you guys could get out there and practice. Um, how much does that speak to your willingness to just do whatever it takes for the program and for Alcorn and? And what are some of those duties that, that you maybe do on a regular basis that people would never think? This guy is a Division One college head coach, and he's painting the field. I'm probably the only one, John, and, uh, that does that. And, uh, you know, we don't have turf. And I practice. I got two practice fields and a half one that I that – the half a field I use to – when it rain and weather to, to kind of mess up on. And we go out in the rain and, and practice like that. But uh, I take time out because – when I first became the head football coach, it, it kind of hit my budget a little bit to where it was costing us like $1,200 uh, to paint those fields and it, we have to paint them every week. So I decided to get my aerosol cans and, and my little old spray buggy and do it myself uh, just to save money to the budget uh, in terms of that. And, um, you know, I have fun doing it. Once the staff meeting over, I let those guys go to work and just give me the time to go out and relax and, and just think about things that, that may happen, losing a coach or, or something with a player or something like that, my next move, or just give me time to have a peace of mind. Um, but just the opportunity to do that, John, and, and have a peace of mind of going out and painting my fields. I mean, it's just what I do. I take pride in everything I do at Alcorn State. So it was a pride thing for me. And I tell the guys all the time, you know, um, this don't happen anywhere. Uh, nowhere but here at Alcorn. So, I take pride in, in doing those kind of things and, and making sure the young men 
as the well as the coaching staff get what they need to be successful. Uh, even the coaching staff, you know, making sure they have they need what they need to to get these young men to play hard. Uh, whether it's buying dummies and all kind of agile dummies and all that kind of stuff, stuff for the practice. So uh, we do a good job of that. You know, speaking of getting what you need, I think continuity is a huge element in that. I and mean, you've had some coaches that have been very loyal to you and, and you've had a stable staff. On the flip side of that, you've not had a lot of continuity at the upper levels of Alcorn State University. You've been through um, four or five presidents. You've worked with four or five different ADs when you talk about interims and permanent ADs. Um, what are the challenges in that when there's not that continuity? And, and maybe how much pride do you take and being uh, a symbol of stability at Alcorn. And that's, that's the biggest thing I talk about. And uh, even some of the coaches now, you know, it's kind of it's kind of worried and puzzled about whether I'm going to be there or not, being in my last year of my contract. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting questioned about that as well. And, and, you know, I think it was six presidents and five ADs that, uh, that I've been under since I've been at Alcorn State. So uh, stability is, is, is big. And when you talk about stability, because you don't know, uh, the next president or the next AD might decide to go in a different direction. And uh, and that's the thing that I really, I really take pride in thinking about uh, as far as my staff wise and, and making sure those guys are understanding what I'm, what I'm going through, uh, what I might be or where I may not be um, in the next year. So hopefully we'll get this thing subsided and, and get it squashed and, and I continue to coach there at all going. But if not, like I said, John, uh, my next move, uh, where am I at? These, these guys will be the first one I look at. You, uh, you, the powers that be would be wise to get a new contract uh, offer in front of you sooner rather than later, especially coming off that dramatic, uh, really exciting comeback win that you had last week against Grambling. Uh, can you take us through that and just take us through the mindset as you guys are going late in the game, marching, I think, right at 80 yards, to score the game-winning touchdown and, and get a huge victory for your program. And I'm sure personally uh, I had to feel pretty nice to, to get a win against a guy in Hugh Jackson that's been an NFL head coach. Yeah, and you're right. And, and, and just the feeling that, you know, you're coaching against an NFL coach on the other side of the field, man. And, you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard feeling. It's, it's good to see that. But to, 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 to make that last uh, drive down the field and just listen to the coordinators uh, communicate, um, no panic or nothing. Uh, it's kind of big, man. And like I tell them, you know, uh, the, the kids can't see you panic. You have to be calm on the fire. And I think Coach Phillip and Coach Ratton did an outstanding job of, of play calling and getting that thing down the field to, to score that opening touchdown. It was no panic. It was, it, we had, I think, like right on three minutes and 42 seconds left uh, to get a scoring drive and went down on the field and still had a minute and 42 seconds left on the clock. Um, so it was, it was kind of, I was kind of like too quick to score, but I really wanted to get it in. I, because my defense was playing really well and, uh, and stopping the, what Grandin was doing offensively. So, uh, it was very exciting to see that, uh, the last week against Alabama state, we, we did another drive the same way, uh, went 89 yeah. yards for the game winning touchdown for the game winning field goal, had opportunity to win that one too at the end of regulation. But you know, those drive like that, it means a lot. And and, and the coaches know what they're doing. Uh, in terms of play calling and, and putting the young men in a good situation to be successful. That's the biggest thing. Uh, we talk about that all the time as coaches. Give these guys an opportunity to be successful. You know, uh, put them in the best situation uh, to be successful. Even in the course of practice, we work on a two-minute drill every Wednesday. Uh, so there's something we really used to. Uh, we don't panic, stay calm on the fire and all that kind of stuff. So I give them a scenario, uh, one minute, 45 seconds, we need to put it in the box. Uh, we start in front of minus 30 and two timeouts left, you know, and sure enough, we'll march up down the field and, and we'll stick it in sometime. Yeah. But if not, give a defense a chance to hold uh, from a two-minute drill too as well. Uh, that's really uh, incredible insight from you. It is your it is your open week, as you alluded to. You have one three out of four. You really control your own destiny uh, in the SWAC and you got a chance to win your division and maybe play for another – another birth in the celebration bowl, as long as you guys keep handling business. So um, I want to ask you, how does coach Fred McNair uh, spend his bye week? And and since you don't have a game this weekend, uh, you got anything fun going on? I heard you can, uh, I heard you're a pretty mean cook. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing I love to do. I'm a I love to cook, man, and barbecue and boil crawfish. We have crawfish yeah. boil yeah. uh, when it's time to do that, and I get to get get the coaching staff over. We'll we'll have crawfish boil and everything, man. So, um, but this week, you know, I had three days of practice: Tuesday, Wednesday, and today. And I got the guys out today, and they still lift the weights. And Friday, uh, they'll lift weights, and they have the day off on Saturday. And I will come back Sunday. And for myself, you know, I'm going to try to hit the road and try to find me some more football players, man. We got coaches out now looking for guys now. So it's recruiting for us right now. So we don't have time to rest. Uh, while, we, while I'm traveling, I may call the coaches and, and tell them something I'm thinking about. Um, but it's very rare that we get a chance to – do these special things and try to find football players coming up to this institution or win more championships. You know, I can't remember if it's it was Coach Buzz uh, who does a great job for you there on the offensive side and and is key in your recruiting or who it was. But I've seen I've seen some pictures of some of those crawfish boils uh, that you've thrown down. I'm still waiting on an invite for that, man. <laughs> I tell you, John, the next one I have you be invited, man. Uh, we'll be probably coming up in the spring, uh, right when spring uh, practice over with. We'll we'll get one together and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll still be there. Um, but, you know, just, we'll do it in the spring, but uh, just coach booth, I call it, he's my special, special assistant. And he's also the recruiting coordinator and he does a phenomenal job, uh, John, and things that I ask him to do in terms of ordering equipment for the field and, and stuff like that. He does a outstanding job, man. But, you know, coach booth, I got him out of Nebraska. I think he was doing a, he was a landscaping, uh, cutting grass and stuff, and I called him, and he had a green old S10 pickup, and he drove it down, and and uh, he come to become the GA, and he was been the GA, and I, I so fit to what he was doing, and man, it wasn't it was it was just so right for me to harm as a running back coach. That's awesome. I've uh, I've been fortunate to get to know him a little bit. Spent some time with him at the last couple of coaches conventions in, in San Antonio and and Charlotte, and uh, I'm. Not sure how long it took me to recover from spending some time with him, um, <laughs> but but it's always a good time when I get to spend some time with him. I'm I'm about to wrap it up here with you. Um, I got to know when you ever sleep because um, I've heard that you'll send a text out at three thirty in the morning telling guys, "Hey, here's what we got. Here's here's what we got coming up today. Let's practice at this time. Let's get this done." Uh, so my goodness, when do you ever sleep? And that's that's close to it, John. And you know, I. I... I guess up, man, and I probably this week I, I was I was really I was really on the road this week because I was up at three o'clock um some morning. I go down to the to the office and I watch film on Pine Bluff and, and see what they're trying to do. I think I went through the, the Miles College game against Pine Bluff and the Southern game against Pine Bluff for two nights this week at three o'clock in the morning. And uh just remind the guys, I sent them out a text that practice regular time and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, I give me a couple hours in at night, John and Sometimes I wake up in the morning time I can't go back to sleep. So I go to go to the gym and and uh and go to my office and and, and just start doing paperwork and all those things that I that I need to do to take care of business. Because I want these guys don't have to worry about nothing, John. I don't want them coaches have to worry about anything that, that we're trying to put together because it's gonna already be together before they get there. So uh when I meet with them, we'll meet on Sundays and we'll go over the we'll go over the game we just played on that Saturday. Uh, talk about the kids during the course of the game and how well they played. And, and then it's time to go to work. That's awesome, man. I love you can hear the passion for the job in your voice. Last question here, because I know it's something else you're passionate about fishing. What's your all time? What's your best trophy catch out there fishing? And, and how often do you try to get out there and get some fishing done when you're not eat, sleep, breathing football? And that's true, John. I, I haven't really got a chance to get out much. Uh, during the course of this past uh, this past spring, but uh, my brother they do a lot of fishing. Uh, Tim and Jason they does a lot of fishing. I, but I just tell them I just want to drive the boat sometime, and and I tell them I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see how good a fisherman you are. If you can catch a fish fast, I drive that boat. You're really good. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So do do you have a trophy catch though? Do you have one that you? No, I just like it for the pleasure, John. I, I would I catch a big one or a small one. I just like to have fun and relaxation and, and see these fishes, man. I, I don't have a trophy fish or nothing like that, but uh, I caught a, about, about a five-pound bass one time. And that's the biggest thing I've caught. Uh, but those brims and white perch, I really enjoy just just catching fish. 
Love it. Coach Fred McNair of Alcorn, you've got some football trophies. That's what matters the most. Like I said, four SWAC division titles, a couple of overall SWAC conference championship titles with celebration bowl bursts. You're rolling again this season. Coach, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, man. Appreciate the gentleman. I'm throwing a reel out there and try to reel one of these other championships in, too, as well. I, li I like that. We're going to be following closely, buddy. Take care, Coach. All right. Thanks for having me, John. Yes, sir.